live from Soho, New York City. It's Wearable Electronics with Becky Stern. That's me. Hello. Welcome to the show. Every week we talk about wearable electronics. With me is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. What's <laughs> yeah. on today's show? Okay. Uh, on today's show, uh, actually, before we even get started, yeah. today is live show day. Oh, yeah, we're moving all live shows to today, right. day gonna, of all the live we're shows. We're going to talk about that. So um, if uh, people have things that they want to show later tonight, they can go on the show and tell. They can watch Wearable Wednesday with you, Becky Stern, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. start a project, a project, and then show it later in the evening. I would like that. All right. On today's show, the code is conductive. 10% off floors and wearables expires tonight at midnight. Except Wearable Wednesday. It's where we talk about all the things happening this week and debut a new project. OK. Component of the week. We show you something new you haven't seen, how to use it, what it's good for, why we think it's cool. Tools we less than three. Oh, wait. Love. We love <laughs> tools. Love. <laughs> On the internet. Today, it's multimeters. All right. And you have questions, Becky has answers. You can ask questions at any time during the show in the comments on YouTube. We save them for the next show. Uh, and if we ask your question on the air, you'll be entered into our giveaway. So ask your pertinent wearables questions, either in the comments or on Google Plus or Twitter. I got a voicemail question the other day. All right. Pretty good. All that and more on wearable electronics with Becky Stern. OK, here we are. We are. We are here. All right. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is the cool stuff on the blog. That's right. Yeah. That's Wearable Wednesday. Mm -hmm. All the news that's fit to wear, I guess. <laughs> Every week on the blog, we post up a whole bunch of projects. If you're looking for inspiration or you want to share your project with us, we'd love to post about your project. Here's a pair of awesome uh, Gemma Hoop earrings made with our 16 NeoPixel ring. And the message on the vine is, the other earring is being programmed. Yeah. I remember when we were programming these earrings, it's like, come lean this way so I can plug the USB cable in yeah. and reprogram your earrings. Th things that weren't common to say, but now are becoming common, I have to recharge my book. I have to reprogram my earrings. Yep. Do you have the USB cable for my jacket? <laughs> Not so bad, 2014. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I'm living in the future, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Some yeah. stuff didn't work out, but some stuff did. Some All stuff right. is continuing to start to work out and creep, creep me out, like nanobot stuff. Yeah, I think um, the idea that we have phones that are way better than the tricorder in Star Trek, which was way set off in the future, is kind of neat. It's like all of humankind knowledge, and yeah. you can get a hold of anyone and do mm -hmm. just about anything. And they're doing like the medical device thing too, yeah, like where they're yeah, augmenting yeah. phones, so like there's all kinds That's, of, yeah. That one's a surprising one that I don't think people thought that would happen, but it did, so anyways. Computers uh, on your face. I yeah. thought that would happen. I mean, Star Trek also foretold that. Speaking of computers on your face, Upcoming at <laughs> iBeam, which is an art and tech center here in New York, there's a uh, new computational fashion event happening at the end of February. It's going to be a panel discussion about intellectual property in fashion tech. So it's really yeah. interesting because the hardware world thinks about intellectual property in a ma a many different ways. And yeah. the fashion world thinks about intellectual property in many different ways. And all of those different ways are so different from each other, even. So yeah. there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, I have an observation about open source hardware and fashion. Those industries are more similar than people realize because yeah. open source hardware means um, it's acknowledging a fact that anyone can copy your hardware design. Right, and certain yeah. parts of hardware can't be copyrighted in the first place. Yeah. And so um, th that's, yeah. and that's the same as uh, fashion design. Fashion, dress, dress patterns cannot be protected. Right, because it's considered a technical drawing, just like yeah. a schematic of a um, so yeah. Diagram. yeah, like the actual image of it, your, your artist rendering, you can have the copyright, but you can't stop someone from getting a dress and making an exact pattern of it. Right. Um, so what, what do fashion companies do? They must be going out of business. Oh, my God. No. They innovate faster. They innovate faster, and they really rely heavily on their brands, which yes. are trademarks. Yep. And, if you and they down, put their brands all in all of They <laughs> make it. That's why style, like the high fashion brands have like Louis Vuitton printed on everything. It's yeah. because you can't make a knockoff of that and have it not infringe on a trademark. Yeah. And so like. Their clothing is made out of the logo. Right. And they do that as a, tr yeah, as a trick to thwart um, cloning, which is really interesting. Yeah. But I think that um, those two worlds, you're, I agree with you that open source hardware and fashion are really similar in yeah. the intellectual property space, but they don't speak the same languages at each other. They yeah. have similar problems and similar concerns, yeah. but they, they don't yet speak the same language. Yeah. And that's why so. I like wearable electronics, because it forces those two worlds together that have more in common right. than, they, than they know. So if you're interested about this, you could go to this uh, panel discussion and ask questions. Um, yeah. I'm on the advisory board for this event series at iBeam. It's really fun. Um, okay. Lots of smart people okay. hanging out. Go check it out. It's on the blog if you want more information. All right. And then um, next, the big news. Um, 
show and tell, 7.30 tonight. Ask an engineer, 8 p.m. tonight. Can't believe it. I can't believe it's I'm happening. sharing the same day as the longest running live electronic show. Yeah. By well, doing the longest running and only live yeah. wearable electronic show. <laughs> It doesn't matter how many there are. It, you're the longest running one. It doesn't matter. There could be a million of them. Longest running and first. Yeah. And can, live, right now, still only. Live, yeah. And what's cool is this means that we're going to get a whole new group of people that previously weren't available on Saturday nights. Right. Um, we want to have schools participate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to have people in different time zones. And so we're going to try this. We're going to see how it goes. And uh, we'll see. Now, one thing that I should mention, a programming note. So we have our code, which is for wearable stuff. You can't combine this with the Ask an Engineer code. You one can't, code per order. One code per order, yeah. Um, so that's the only thing, folks. Don't. I know like some folks are going to email, but you can't combine the two to get 20% right. off. It's, it's live show is, day. You <laughs> get 10% off. Like That's, that's much, like how yeah, it goes. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. If you want to buy early because your weird stuff's going to run out of stock, use the wearables code. Yeah. <laughs> or, and then later at night. Yeah. And we don't have Nielsen ratings or anything like that, so vote with your code if you want to see more quality <laughs> programming from Adafruit for wearable electronics, Put like PBS. Yeah. Code. You'll get a tote bag and a coffee cup. You'll like get a those. Raspberry Pi and a PCB ruler. Yeah. Oh, this month is a free uh, Permaproto. Oh, sweet. Okay, so you'll get a Permaproto instead yeah. of a tote bag. Yeah, if you spend $99 or more. Okay, next up. So that's cool. L later on, tune in for those other live shows. Yeah. Other, other news on the blog, Amy Ratcliffe is tearing it up with her cosplay posts. This is a post about how to make a rogue from X-Men costume. She posts yeah. up cool tutorials, like not just here's a cool cosplay, but here's a cool cosplay and how the person made it. Yeah. So she digs through to find people who are documenting their process, which is really interesting yeah. if you're interested in dressing up like a character from the X-Men. And let's face it, we all are. Yeah, this year is the year of Halloween craziness at Adafruit. For the last two or three years, I wanted Phil to do... Phil has a scheme. Phil has a Halloween scheme, <laughs> yeah. and it's February, yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so one year, I'm like, okay, we're moving into our new building. It's going to be a big time. Everything's going to be great. Yeah. We're going to do. We're going to go to the Halloween parade. Sandy. Okay. Yeah, know. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. And then the next year, it's like, well, I had to get married. And so the year after that is this year. So what we're going to do is we, we're going to have... Halloween was a pretty big deal it last was. year at Adafruit. Yeah, it was. But you this, still went to the parade. Yeah, I went to... I was in, I, had all the, I, had, yeah. I wore all of this. Uh -huh. I wore this rack. Um, and so this year we're going to have um, lots of Hall Halloween stuff. And our theme here at Adafruit is Dune because we have to pick a theme each year. And uh, I started, this is like, I got this jacket to see if like this could work as part of the costume because it has these little ribbings. Oh, and they have holes in them. Yeah. We could put LEDs behind those holes. We could do all sorts of things. So anyways, it's, it's coming. People make fun of me, like the Portlandia put a burn on it because I'm just like, just put some LEDs on it. Yeah. No, your lens in life has a bunch of neopixels in it. Yeah. Okay. It's both a blessing and a curse. Yeah. All right, what's going on here? This is a setup for our video debut this week. Ah. Um, this week we made, it's not a project, it's an um, overview of all of the different conductive textiles that we have and yeah. what they're good for. And um, Andrew Baker made this really lovely, slick, slickly edited video that we would like to show you. And hopefully you will learn something and it will advise your, um, your yeah. purchases. You I get 10% want... off any of these things. I don't want to ruin it for anyone, but I saw this video. I was here for a little bit of it. This is the best overview of all the ways that you can conduct electricity through soft stuff. Textiles. <laughs> yeah. All of the textiles. Yeah. So let's... Please uh, enjoy. Let's reel the film. <laughs> Conductive textiles. They're great for sewing flexible circuits, adding sensors and switches to your clothes, and all sorts of other wearable electronics. Today we'll explore all of the conductive textiles available at Adafruit. Let's start with conductive thread. All three of these flavors are made from stainless steel, which won't oxidize over time like silver will. Our thin two-ply conductive thread can go in the bobbin side of a sewing machine, with plain thread up top. Our three-ply conductive thread is great for hand sewing. It has a lower resistance than two-ply, so it's ideal for long power runs to faraway neopixels. We also have conductive yarn, which is soft and fuzzy, perfect for making a pair of touchscreen gloves or a knitted stretch sensor. For powering a lot of sewable neopixels, we use many strands of three-ply conductive thread together, held to the fabric with a zigzag stitch. You can use conductive thread to make a zipper switch to activate your TV Be Gone jacket. You can tape a piece of conductive thread to either side of a piece of Velostat for a durable and inexpensive pressure sensor, like in these Firewalker sneakers. It comes in our beginner LED sewing kit, which is a great way to start exploring with this fun material. For even more power delivery, 
take a look at our stainless steel conductive ribbon in both narrow and wide. On to the fabric. We have three flavors of conductive fabric, all of which are silver or silver plated and may oxidize over time. Still, your project should be fine for a year or two. This woven conductive fabric is shiny and stiff. We use it with iron-on interfacing to make the buttons for this plush NES controller. Conductive fabric is great for capacitive touch sensing. These two types are knit, which means they're stretchy and soft. This jersey type isn't even that shiny and looks just like t-shirt fabric. Conductive fabric also blocks certain radio frequencies, so you can use it to block unwanted cell transmissions or to protect your RFID bank card. This is stainless steel fiber. You can use it in your felting projects to make buttons and pressure sensors. And this is conductive hook and loop. It's great for making switches at the closures of your book bag or jacket. We're always testing new materials to bring you the best conductive textiles available. Check out our eTextiles projects on the Adafruit Learning System and subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. Okay, and we're back. All right, good work. Those are all of the textiles. Yeah. And I mean, we have, you know, we're always carrying more, but. Do you have a favorite? It's really hard to pick favorites. Um, yeah. I think, I, if it's okay for me to say, I would like to say that I consider EL materials the Doritos of wearable electronics, and this stuff the caviar of wearable electronics. Okay. There's a time and a place for Doritos, and there's a time and a place for fish eggs. Okay. <laughs> All right. The conductive fiber cool, I like a lot. Cool, I don't know. cool ranch EL. Okay. So good. Um, EL, I'm sorry. Not EL, a component of the week. It's component of the week time. We have a new thing in the store. It's this. Ooh, what is it? Ooh, it looks like it has a little face on it. Yeah. It's a bone conduction um, transducer. So it's a speaker that vibrates against your skull to play sound using your head as a speaker. This is freaky. So when Lady Ada got these, she was running around the factory and she would put it on someone's skull, and then they were hearing music, and they're like, ah, uh, what's going on? And nobody else around you can hear you can hear yeah. it because it's just inside your own head, and it well, and it vibrates enough to go in, you know, get inside your inner ear, and yeah. and your um, ear then processes it processes it as sound. So that's super cool. We have them in the store now, so look for um, a project with them if you'd like to suggest your project ideas. I would yeah. love to hear them. Um, we took apart a device that contained these not too long ago, the yeah. Synapse uh, headset, and it comes inside a baseball cap, and it has two bone conduction speakers and little Bluetooth, um, it's like a Bluetooth headset for your phone, so you yeah. can talk on the phone, you can listen to music on your phone, um, and it doesn't block your regular hearing, so it's safer for riding a bike. Yeah. Um, and then they were also developing a version for uh, some certain types of deafness. If, if your deafness is like uh, outside of your inner ear, yeah. Then, or you know, there's certain types of deafness that this can work for you. So yeah. some people, they, there's a video online of the, the. I think the project originally was Kickstarter, and it's first this entertainment one for listening to music, then the one for deaf people, which involves a little bit more scientific research, obviously. Yeah. And um, there's videos of people putting it, putting the thing on for the f and hearing. hearing sound for the very first time yeah, yeah, yeah. through these bone conduction speakers, and um, it's really interesting to watch. Yeah. It doesn't work for all deaf people, of course, but, um, and there's yeah. a guy who, um, a colorblind guy in the UK, I think he's in the UK, he's been covered a lot in the media recently because he wears a computer on his head and computers on your face are like a thing now, you know? Yeah. And um, he is colorblind really badly and he has a little camera thing that dangles in front of his face and a bone conduction speaker and he's written some custom software to play colors as sound so oh, that he cool. can experience that information. Yeah. Um, I found that this after a while gave me a headache, so obviously he, like, he obviously wants to, like, experience color uh, enough to, like, with trial and error, establish some wearable tech that works for him yeah. all the time, which is super cool. Okay. Um, we have a video, but before the video, the code is conductive. If you'd like to buy some bone conduction transducer speakers for your own wearable <laughs> electronics project, you can get 10% off. Yeah. Until midnight tonight. Okay. And then this video is when we actually did that teardown. Yeah, enjoy the teardown. We're okay. going to share it with you now. Today we're tearing down this Synapse Bone Conduction Hat. It's like a Bluetooth headset, but it uses bone conduction speakers to vibrate your skull instead of putting earphones in your ears. It's great for riding your bike because it doesn't block your regular hearing, and we couldn't wait to check out the inside to see how it works. The two bone conduction coils sit inside the band of the hat, and the controls, microphone, and battery are in the brim. Here's Lady Ada to walk us through the electronics on the board. There's the main PCB and there's this really big battery. You need a lot of battery because these transducers are like little motors. They take a lot of current, more so than actual normal speakers. On the back, you've got some buttons for, you know, volume up, volume down, power. Um, there's a micro USB connector that's used to charge up this battery over here. 
And then you've got these little wires and that's how you can modularize and connect these bone conduction and um, microphone modules to it. On this side, uh, that's where we get most of the electronics. And actually, it's, it's pretty straightforward. There's an all-in-one Bluetooth audio module. It usually has FCC certification, C certification ready to go. Um, it shows up just as a Bluetooth audio device They're using the HDP profile, and it just spits audio out. So that's it, you don't need a microcontroller, you don't need any processing power. Um, the audio goes out, and then there's a little amplifier board here that actually drives the transducers. So let's look at this in detail under the microscope. So starting from over here to the right, this is the battery connector and these are the little solder tabs and hopefully there's a plus sign. This is that audio module, so it uses an ISSC. It's probably some basic low cost audio module. There's a little bit of flash chip, a crystal. You can see this is just placed on and soldered in place. There's a little antenna over here that does the Bluetooth stuff and you can look up this parts, probably under NDA, but um, it's these tend to be an all-in-one, ready-to-go, you know, line audio out, microphone in. Um, this is probably protection circuitry and regulator from the LiPo battery over here. So usually this side would be pick and place, and this maybe this side is hand soldered. Just how it goes sometimes in manufacturing when you're using double-sided designs. This is an LM4863. Look that up, it's probably an audio amplifier board or a motor driver board from National. They make good linear stuff. A dual color LED, you can see there's four pins, that's how you know it's dual color. And then hot glue to protect the connections to these little mini wire connectors that go to the conduction modules. You can see the coiled magnetics and it just vibrates uh, just like a speaker coil would vibrate, but in this case, it, you know, you can press it up against something, and this is actually magnetic, so you can press it up against something, and it will vibrate the base to create an effective audio. So these use a little bit more power than a speaker, and when you touch them, especially to uh, your ear bones or your skull, uh, it'll turn your skull into the cavity of a speaker, so you can sort of hear from inside of your head. Here's the little microphone. Oh, oh. Minty, minty microphone, little teeny guy, kind of a standard electric mic. Small, but you know, for uh, basic audio, just voice range, probably works fine. For this and many other teardowns, we're using the Adafruit USB microscope with its articulated stand, the official vision system of wearables teardowns here at Adafruit. And if you've got a device you'd like to see us tear down, post it up in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more Wearable Wednesdays. All right, and oops. We're back on the wrong slide. Well, it's not a nice thing you said right before, know, right before we I came know. back to the thing Phil told me about someone's I cat know. dying. Someone, their pet passed away. I just And right before we came back, <laughs> so and the cat died. Oh. I have to figure out my, uh, my timing <laughs> a little bit. We can see the numbers counting down, like five, four, cat yeah. died, well, two. <laughs> Vicky and I don't get a ton of chance to catch up. So like when a video is playing, I'm like, oh, by the way, this is going on, and this, that, and the other thing. Yeah, I got to work on my timing. So there. sorry about your, Co about comedy, your cat. Somebody. Comedy timing, I can do okay. Yeah, uh -huh. so this was just tragedy down timing. Lo downloading news. It was you. news. I got it. News okay. processed. Okay. <clears throat> it won't affect me emotionally. All right, tools your heart. I love tools. Yeah, there you go. Multimeters. So uh, this week, we want to celebrate Collins Lab, new Collins Lab episode, yes. all about multimeters. Super awesome video series that. Yes. Um, Colin used to do at Make. I was there yeah. with him at Make too. It was really popular and awesome. And so there's this video that you're going to want to watch all about multimeters. And we're going to show you part of it today. Yeah. We have so many multimeters in the store. I think we have multiple multimeters. Multiple, multiple. Yeah. yeah. So four and then five, six. We have these are the standard ones. The one in the bottom left is a pocket. We have the X Tech name brand. Then we have the one that either comes as yellow or green, and it's the like generic low cost one. And then we have the probe and the tweezers. Tweezers for tiny parts. Probe for plugging into yeah. ground on your circuit and poking around on There's different parts of your circuit. So we can, all of your electricity metering needs can be solved by one, one product shop. or another. Yeah. And um, we wanted to show just a part, the first part of Colin's video. It's about seven minutes long, so we're going to show you the first part, yeah. which shows you how to test continuity, and then um, you'll have to click the link in the description to watch the whole video. Okay. That's very nice of you. When repairing or troubleshooting a circuit, a multimeter is your best friend. How's it going, buddy? 
A multimeter is like a stethoscope for electronics. It takes abstract concepts such as voltage and current and makes them real by giving us the ability to measure them. This particular model is a manual range digital multimeter. Manual range meaning that I need to set the particular range of values I want to measure and digital as it uses a digital display to show reading. Auto range meters, like this one, allow you to set the type of measurement you want to make without the need to specify a value range. Analog meters don't use an LCD. Instead, they use an old-fashioned mechanical needle to display their values. Like this one? Indeed, Lady Ada. Exactly like that rather large analog multimeter. When is that from? This one was made in the 1960s, but multimeters were first made in the 1820s. But not much has changed since then. There's still a large display up top, a mechanical dial to select modes, and two wire leads to connect to your circuit. So do people even use analog meters anymore? Absolutely. I really like analog multimeters because the moving dial makes it easier to see patterns in your circuit, easier than a digital multimeter. The simplest way to use a multimeter is for testing continuity, whether two points are electrically connected to one another. This is great for checking for solder bridges or cold solder joints within a circuit. Just make sure this circuit is unpowered before testing. First, turn the dial to the continuity setting. Then, connect the black lead to the common ground terminal and the red lead to the rightmost terminal. Then, connect the leads to each point in the circuit we want to test for continuity. If the multimeter detects connectivity between those two points, an audible beep will occur. If not, then no beeping shall occur. No beeping. Here's my lady to tip for using continuity mode in a multimeter. Especially in a loud office, you can't hear the beep. Cradle it against your ears, and that way, when you do continuity test, you'll hear it nice and loud. No beeping. No beeping. No beeping. We want to make a, yeah. a, a GIF of Colin, no yeah. beeping. When I get some time, I'm going to the GIF brewery. Any one of you could do it. You'd beat <laughs> Phil. He, he no, does, yeah. <laughs> um, so the multimeters, if you want to learn more about them, um, you can click the link in the description to watch Colin's whole video. We have all of these multimeters, and if you want to get yourself a multimeter, it's a very handy tool for wearables for debugging your circuit. I bring mine to the fabric store to like explore if some um, metallic-looking fabric, oh, sometimes idea. they're actually metal, and you can use them for sensors, capacitive touch sensing, like whatever. Multimeter, do not leave home without it. Don't leave home without it. This pocket one is a great one. It's what we're giving away later on the show. Um, and uh, we're running a little over, so I won't show the demo, but you can... Um, we have a great tutorial on the okay. learning system. You know what? Um, we're actually doing pretty good now. Yeah? You yeah. want me to show? Okay. Yeah, you can, you can speed through the questions, but let's, let's go to the okay. overhead. Because we set up all these lights. We did set up all <laughs> the like, lights for the overhead. You don't yeah. want to not take advantage of yeah. them. Like, come on, See, our Elmo died, so this is um, the, our yeah. overhead not thing. Not the Muppet, the, no, the no, overhead no, projector. No, 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 the overhead projector. So <laughs> this, is, this is my pocket multimeter, the same one we're giving away. This is a piece of our conductive jersey. That um, lady Becky said Elmo died. Why did you <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It was a, and it was a, it's a lighting system. So, all right, so it's this is an acronym for something. Okay, so this is um, the Jersey Fabric. This multimeter is auto ranging, which means it can take a little bit of time to like settle on a value because it'll look for uh, the safe values to test first, it'll the higher right. values, and then it'll slowly dial itself down to the range of the resistance. So you can see that from here to here on this conductive jersey is only 2.4 ohms. That's really good. This stuff is really conductive. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's measuring resistance, um, and uh, Colin showed you how to measure continuity. There's a bunch of different other things you can measure with multimeters, as the name suggests, capacitance, yeah. um, amperage, all kinds of other stuff. Okay. It is time for uh, the code before it goes to question and answer. Code's conductive, 10% off floor and wearable, expires 1159 tonight. Get on it. Okay. You got questions, Becky has answers. The first question is... Is there any piezoelectrical materials available for sewing into shoes instead of using coin cell batteries? So Kathy asked this question in relation to the Firewalker sneakers. She wanted to know if she could like just have power generation happen and and uh, to light up the LEDs instead uh, of storing batteries. You know, with a piezoelectric yeah, material that yeah. translates. 
um, physical energy into electrical energy? Um, and the answer is yes, those materials exist, but um, they're not very efficient and they're not, or they don't generate very much power. So. Um, not nearly enough power to power the Firewalker sneakers, certainly, and, and so you, probably barely enough power to power one LED. So, uh, and even if, and the, so those materials are improving, although there's there's kind of like battery technology that it comes up against a wall of like development where it can't get much more efficient bef without changing the material science and developing some new scientific discovery. But yeah. even if there were a piezoelectric material that could generate enough electricity to power your LED sneakers, you would probably want a battery to store that, to you would be charging a battery when you're walking around generating electricity and then using the battery power to run your LEDs. And that's so that you have a nice clean power supply um, and you don't get any interruptions or weird spikes when you're like sitting still, it wouldn't okay. have any juice, you know? Next up is from Kristen, love the buttons. How about how weatherproof are the components in general? Can they be? Can they withstand rain and snow in small amounts? Yeah, it's totally fine. I mean, I have the buttons on my coat, and I show them to people all the time. Uh, yeah. The thing that usually happens is like a wire will come off of the battery or something, and so you have to like tape it up and do strain relief on your on your wire wires. But the thread is fine. Yeah. The buttons actually like cover the NeoPixel, so if it snows on you, they're not actually getting like a clump of snow or water like right on the NeoPixel. If you were to get like rained on, the water could come down your your garment and come behind the button and short the conductive thread but you would see that happening by the light would be acting funny. You yeah. just turn it off until it's dry. Um, but I've been wearing, this is my winter coat, I've been wearing it every day and turning on the LEDs rather frequently because you know, oh, yeah. I gotta tell people about the wearable electronics we build. And I've been wearing it in the snow and um, granted not on all the time in the snow, but it's been fine. Yeah, okay. go for it, dude. Next when in doubt, turn it off. From Jason, first up, happy birthday, that was last week. Yay. So what is the best way to strip solid core wire? I'm pretty good at stripping the ends of a wire, but when I try stripping more than a few millimeters, the wire usually breaks. Please help. What technique works when you want to strip the wire? portion of the wire instead of just a few inches. Look, Jason, see, this is why I save your questions for next week. So you ask them, and then I prepare mm. a demo for you. Jason, I'm going to show you how I strip a long piece of wire. Like in the Tiara tutorial, I, I say, strip a really long piece of wire. Yeah. Um, first of all, make it longer than you need it to be. Okay. So that at the end, you can wrap it around your hand okay. to pull on it really hard, and then maybe you don't need that part if it gets all kinked okay. up. Secondly, take off reasonable chunks of, of insulation at a time. So like that's like four inches pull it off to the end, then start again like four, four more inches down and pull that off, and then keep going until you're all the way down to your hand. And then it can be tricky to strip this part that was in your hand. You can like switch sides if you don't mind that getting kinked. Uh, okay. But generally you just bite off out and then that hurts your hand. So really that's what the excess <laughs> is for, so that you can hold on to the insulated wire. Um, strip off little bits at a time. That's Jason. great. Okay. Good live demo. Mm. I didn't know that was coming. Okay. Next up. Happy birthday, Becky. I have a question. I would like to make a rug with lights. Should I prefer EL wire or NeoPixels? Thank you. It's a design decision, Mirabelle. Uh, if you want your rug to make a high-pitched whining noise, use EL materials. You might be able to insulate yeah. the inverter inside your rug. It's in a noisy place where there's music playing and everything. Be totally no fine. one will hear it. The inverter, you know, inverters are clunky. You might not be able to find a place to put it. Although then again, you can. Um, you can find the ones that plug into the wall, so your rug could plug into the wall. NeoPixels just maybe, like, it's about solid lines of light or planes of light versus points of light that you might then want to diffuse. So, yeah. and if, if you're not, if, you know, if programming is something that makes you nervous, you might want to try EL wire first because there's no programming to do um, versus NeoPixels, which you can make whichever color you want and have animations, which are really cool. So it's a design decision, but they are two divergent paths in a wood. Okay. And last question. Hey, Adafruit, I recently purchased an Adafruit Gemma. Do you think I can use it for something like this, too? Discovered that it doesn't have a serial port and was pretty bummed to read, but I won't be able to send and receive signals, as it always has to be bootloaded help. I don't want my money to go to waste. Is there a plugin I can download and enable the serial port? Teresa, she's commenting on the Plush Game Controller, which used the yeah. Flora as a USB keyboard. And that's something that Flora can do because the um, 32U4 chip has onboard USB HID support. And uh, Gemma's just a little, little tiny, little AT tiny eighty five. Yeah. And I mean, there are reasons we're actually going to do a video about this upcoming soon. The differences between Flora and Gemma, so that people like you, Trissa, will not be confused. Um, yeah. But really, like re these are all DIY electronics. You should really be, you should really read, you should really read all about it before you place your order. But um, there is no, there's no serial communication on on Gemma. Yeah. So I would say it's not a waste. You just use it for. Um, a different project, a NeoPixel project. You just you can't use it as a keyboard the same way you can use Flora as a keyboard, and yeah. that's because the chips are fundamentally different in their capabilities. I like what you said a long time ago, as in like 
today or yesterday or last week. You use the floor as like your dev platform, like doing lots of stuff back and forth. And then when you're ready to go to Gemma, which is kind of on its own and, and low power and will be a, kind of in a project, yeah. um, that's when you say, okay, I got really far. I'm done because I'm looking at serial. I'm debugging and everything. Now right. I'm done with that. Now it's time to put it on Gemma. So sure. they, they, they could work together in that way. Yeah, I often you will develop on floor and deploy to Gemma, and that's that's for things where there's like a sensor, like the Velistat, where you need to see the values coming in the serial port to debug, like how to write your program. Oh, like, yeah. oh, when I, when my my body size presses down, it's a 400, and then I'm going to code to use the value 400 to be the trigger for the action. Yeah. Um, you need Flora to do the serial communication for that, and then yeah. but then when you because it's just an analog sensor and you already know the range, you can deploy that code to Gemma, take out the serial communication, and it'll work exactly the same. And instead of twenty five dollars, yeah. it's eight dollars. Um, but Gemma can never do serial communication. Um, yeah. So if if your program relies on the the circuit to act as a keyboard or a mouse, um, talk over Bluetooth, use the GPS, yeah. all the stuff that requires serial, it's just not going to work on Gemma. Di and then Flora is for you. Yeah. Okay, uh, one quick thing before we give away stuff. Code you can conductive. get ten percent off on Flora and Gemma yeah. with code conductor. All right, time to give away something. We're giving away this multimeter. Before you give something away, though, how do people ask questions? They can post them up in the YouTube comments. They can post them up on Google Plus. Yeah. They can at tweet them at us. Yeah. Okay. And they can send carrier pigeons. But okay. if they send a carrier pigeon, it better also be carrying a donut. Okay. <laughs> right. I would, I'm hung, or, I would like a or a cronut, perhaps. Those are. Mm. I, see, mm. I don't. I don't want to set the bar too high. Yeah. It's really hard to get a there's cronut. A, there's a there's a bagel. <laughs> there's half bagel, like half donut thing too. There's a French toast bagel that that John Denier used to bring yeah. me from New Jersey. That was amazing. French toast. Wow. French toast bagel. It tasted like French toast with flavor, but the texture was all bagel. It was Weird. really. Okay. Okay, so if time. you ask a question and I answer it, it goes in this bin. Today there are five, so that's a pretty good chance. All right. One of you will win this multimeter. Finger drumming. Mirabelle! All right, Mirabelle. Congratulations. I hope that you use this multimeter for debugging your light up rug, and I would like to see it. I would love to post about it. Okay. Congratulations. Well, you can claim your prize by emailing support at adafruit.com. I will also reach out to you. That's the show. That's the show. I hope you All guys right. enjoyed, and will join us next week. And if you have a project to show off, something cool you made, Join us to later today at 7.30 p.m. I won't be here, but you will be here. I'll be exactly here in five hours. I might be on the train or yeah. cooking dinner, but I will try to tune in. Yeah. I'll and you can share your projects. I certainly will watch it later. Yeah. And then Ask an Engineer happens at 8. That's right. So if you have questions for Lady Ada, yeah. save them for that. Okay. We'll see you next see week. We'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye-bye.